right, so I'm here with Mike Gettig. Mike's one of the mechanical engineers here at Dynamic Structures, and he was telling me about some of his research where he takes simulation results and turn that, uh, basically drives the, the form of his designs really early on in the design process, almost at the conceptual level. Mike, thanks for having me. Nice to meet you. So tell me a little bit more about your research that you've done and, and how that translates into some of your guys' designs here at Dynamic Structures. The, the main idea is to really start the analysis as early in the process as, as we can. So starting uh, back here at the conceptual design uh, stage rather than uh, downstream at the uh, detailed design stage. And so there's really several reasons for wanting to do that. Um, first of all, um, to do something early in the design process uh, it, it helps you save a lot of money and helps you work a lot more uh, efficiently. Uh, and there's several methods that we use to accomplish that, to do uh, conceptual design and to do it efficiently uh, and to do a lot of analysis at that stage. And the main thing that we do here is to use uh, wireframe models or lightweight type um, structural models to help us um, do analysis uh, early. Um, and so there are several um, advantages to lightweight models. They're easy to create, they're easy to modify, and they're efficient to analyze. So that helps us uh, investigate a huge range of possibilities um, early in the game. I think it's one thing to be able to say that, you know, we do, we do analysis up front in design and, it, and it, uh, it helps us define our form. Show me how that works. How do you take something that you see here on your screen that's, that's largely a, a graph and then turn that into a structural shape? Well, one of the, the uh, differences in our approach uh, is, is that uh, we use algorithmic design where a structure or, or a mechanism is, is created um, using an algorithm as opposed to uh, created manually. Using an algorithmic approach, you can generate a, a vast, a range, uh, vast range of different uh, configurations and do that quickly, so it allows you to really explore a huge amount of uh, design space efficiently. Uh, so the algor algorithmic approach is, uh, is, is key to doing that and, uh, and just driving the whole um, conceptual design uh, workflow using uh, computer programs and parametric uh, designs is, is the key to do that. So, so the, the results basically help you get that, get that right uh, the first time more often. Yeah, yeah, and we have methods also of um, going from that uh, wireframe model into a solid model uh, very efficiently. So it helps to have an automatic um, transfer of information from the conception design model into something that looks more like a detailed model once you, you reach the stage where you can do that. So once you've basically gone through your engineering, your analysis, you have a you know, initial concept of form, how does that concept turn into an engineered model? Well, as I had mentioned before, we, we have some tools to, uh, to help to make that transition automatic and uh, we have some in-house uh, software that we've written here, um, basically to uh, take a, a wireframe and then generate the solid model um, automatically. So let me ask you this, if, if you didn't have access to software that helps you solve these design challenges and go through, you know, iteration after iteration, what would you, I mean, what would you do? Would you be able to... Would you, would you be able to design some of, the, some of the structures that you're able to design? No, that wouldn't really be possible. You'd have to build a lot of models, I think. Uh, it would just be a long, long process. I think uh, we're, we're completely dependent on these uh, software tools for, for doing the type of work that, that we do. I mean, obviously, you know, design was, was done before we had these tools. You, yeah. know, you look at some of the, uh, the earliest uh, telescopes and when they were made, but there was a lot of um, trial and error. There were a lot of models made and it was just a much more labor intensive and time consuming process and, and we can do things uh, quite efficiently now. I, th I think there's a lot of tools available now that really help you uh, work with the detailed design and optimize that. I think um, what uh, we really need to see are more tools that help you do conceptual design and my research uh, was geared towards um, those kind of tools of really doing a, a rigorous search of the potential design space early in the game. I mean, there's uh, big economic consequences and, uh, and, uh, and great um, you know, increases in efficiency that can be made by using these tools. Um, so I, I think um, that's where we need to go, not only in our, in our particular line of work, but I think in, in general, uh, the more effective conceptual design is done, the, uh, the more efficient we can work. 
So Michael, I, I, th I think that the, the work that you guys are doing and, 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 and taking some of the simulation up front and then uh, turning that into conceptual design is really one of the one of the key differences here at Dynamic Structures, which allows them to make structures and projects that uh, you know in, in many circles maybe wouldn't even be approached or, or even attempted, let alone uh, let alone built and, and redefining the entertainment industry and certainly setting new standards when it comes to the world of astronomy. So your work is fantastic. Really impressed. Thanks so much, Mike. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. Next, we hop on over to Emil Van Vuren see how he's using motion analysis tools inside of Autodesk Inventor to determine acceleration rates, motor requirements, and more so that you don't get off the roller coaster holding your neck in pain. Stay tuned.